Hey everyone, welcome to my next video. Today, as promised, we're gonna do SPI. So, as a next communication protocol, let's first look at the hardware. So, I always start by wiring stuff. So, if you remember, this is my development board. Let me zoom in. So, this is the STM32F4 discovery board, and it's very handy because it has lots of peripher peripherals on board. So, we have four user LEDs over here, a user button, a DAC, a microphone, a USB OTG, and the part we're going to use today is the MEMS accelerometer. This IC supports SPI and R2C protocol, so today we're going to use the SPI portion. So, first thing first, we need to know to which pins of the microcontroller it's connected to. So, what you need to do is find the schematic pack for your particular uh, board, and it's provided by the company usually. And you can find it on their site, and mine is open right here. So this is what it looks like. So here you can see all the I.O., the debugging section or the ST-Link part. This is the microcontroller, the audio part, so microphone and DAC, Oops. the USB part, and the LEDs, buttons, and the MEMS accelerometer. As you can see, on its pins, it's connected to MOSI, clock, and MISO pins on the microcontroller pins PA6, 5, and 7. There's also the chip enable, CS, and it's on PE3, so pin uh, port E pin number 3. So this is when you need to know, uh, know to assign the GPIO functions. So let's go to our blank project. This is just a normal project containing RCC, GPIO, and USART setups. And you can find this in the previous video. So strip everything out besides these functions, which initialize the clock for the GPIO and USART, and to initialize the USART and GPIO. Also, we have these two functions to send texts and numbers over USART, because we're going to use USART as in previous videos to debug it. Also, yeah, there's nothing else. So on my right, you can see I have the libraries open up. So this is the RCC, GPIO, and SPI libraries open up. Here is the my main project folder. This is the CMSYS folder for some deeper functions like system and linker scripts. And here is the peripheral driver. So this is where you can see all of them. So to start, the GPIO. So we know that the SPI is on pins 5, 6, and 7, and on port A and on port E number 3 is the chip select pin. So first thing we need to do is figure out which SPI it is. I gave it away because in the datasheet it said SPI1. So let's go into the datasheet. And this is mostly brag sheet because it shows off all the features of the most powerful of their versions. And here you can see up to three SPIs. And that's exactly the case. This has three SPIs. And do not just trust the schematic pack. Let's go down to the, let me scroll to the mem pinout mapping. So here are all the cases. And here are the pinouts. So we want to see where the PA5, 6, and 7 are. Here we go. Oh, no. PA3, PA4, uh, PA5, 6, and 7. So these are connected to SPI clock, SPI MISO, and SPI MOSI, all SPI 1. So we know we need to use the SPI 1 peripheral. Great. So the first thing first, let's define the pins. So we need to copy the any structure. Here is the first one that defines all the peripherals, but we need to just modify it for alternate function. We need to select pins 5, 6, and 7, and that's all. That's all we need to do. So we can copy this one and just add GPIO 5 and an end. So we group together all the settings. So 5, 6, and 7 pins are initiated. They're all going to be alternate function on pin A. Then, because they're alternate function, we need to call this function to connect them to the right peripheral pin. So let's copy this and one more. And we need to find which is the alternate function. So let's find this pin 
afconfig in the gpio.c file. Let's scroll down. And here we can see all the options we can put inside. And we want the SPI1. Here it is. So let's replace it with SPI1. And replace this one with 5. And this one with 6. Because there's a pins 5, 6 and 7. Also, replace it with GPIOA. Remember, Alt, Shift, and just up, oops, Alt, Shift, A. So we replaced everything at once. And now we need to also initialize the chip select pin. So this is the one that's going to tell the part to start communicating. Uh, as you can see, I'm not doing all the basics. I assume that you know something about the protocol, but those who are new, in SPI, you can have multiple devices parallel connected. So you need to tell each device when you're talking to it because otherwise the certain device can load the data lines so others cannot talk to the microcontroller. So that's why we have chip select pins. So we need to have this pin high. Usually it's high to have the device off. And when it's low, device starts loading the data lines, especially the output data line. So uh, let's configure that. We can also use just th this part of code. And we need to just select pin 3. It's going to be an output on GPIO E. Also, I usually say this is the first thing, but I didn't do this this time. We need to connect the clock to the GPIO. So let's go up here, all the peripherals, and let's see. Oh, I already have the GPIO A clock enabled. If you don't, do it. And here is oh, a mail. Here is a GPIO E also enabled, uh, probably from a previous project. But if you don't have those added, uh, add them now. Next thing is the SPI structure. So it's going to look something like this for USART, but for SPI. So we need to also enable SPI. And as it, let's just copy this APB2 function, because you'll see that it turns out that SPI1 is also configured by this function. But you can see only SPI1. If you scroll down to the APB1, the SPI here. No, no SPI here. Maybe on some other. Oh, yeah. Here it is. I score C, SPI2 and 3 are the on the APB1. But we need the APB2 because the SPI1 is on APB2 bus. So let's just copy this one and just put it right here. So we enable clock for SPI and all the pins. So now we need to just enable the SPI actually setup. So let's just create another function like this. Let's go into the beginning and call avoid. Let's call it SPI1 set up oops let's copy it and let's call it right over here and remove the void because this is going to be function that gets called and let's right above this i call them user functions which are not the set of function i like to group similar functions together so as you can see the first is the main function uh, the, here are all the definitions, then is the main function, there are the setup functions, and there are the so-called user function. And I put the interrupts at the very bottom, so I know where they are if I want to look for them. So, to create, we obviously need some kind of structure and parameters. Let's go into the spi.c file and search for that. Let's go down. So, we will want, we will want to call the spi init. as in usart in it over here so you can see the correlation and here the ispi struct in it here are all the parameters so let's just copy everything and we will edit it right now and the structure is called spi init type def instruct so let's just copy that and remove the asterisk because we're not creating a pointer we're creating a structure Come on. Okay. So, first line, we have everything in the spi.h file explained to us. Here's the structure that we just created here. 
we can search it it's gonna highlight it and the first one is the SP directions we're gonna configure it to the full duplex if you don't know what this means you can search it here and this means that it can send and receive data at once on two lines so we have a dedicated MISO and MOSI line uh, so this uh, this is what it means when it says one line this is when it's using only one line so you can only use it as a receive or transmit purpose so this is if you're restricted on board space or wires for some reason but we're going to use two lines full duplex because we have that option next is the mode we want the main microcontroller, here it is, to be the master, not the slave. So it's going to control peripherals. So let's type in master. The data size. It's 8 or 16 bit. Usually it's 8 bit. You'll be very right if you say it's, six, it's 8 bit instead of 16 bit. But we can go into the data sheet of this part. Here it is. Make sure to always download all the datasheet to be available. You can check out other functions, but we're gonna go through this datasheet uh, one stuff other than other what we need. So let's go down to the SPI portion. Here it is. SPI interface for wire. So chip select, uh, serial data in, serial data out, and serial clock, probably. And it says, Read and write register commands are completed in 16 clock pulses or in multiple of 8. So we're gonna send bits, uh, so we're gonna send chunks of 8 bits data. So this is just another clue we want 8. Next is the clock polarity. Here it is. Where is it? Low or high. So this means that the clock is gonna ride either low or high until it's gonna shift. So uh, when the clock, when the communication is not happening, e either the clock is high or is low. And this is what you need to look in the data sheet. Usually it's high, but as well, you don't know. But here we can see from this uh, diagram, the chip select is high, as I told you before. And when it gets low, we're ready for communication. You can see the clock. It's been high. And when we started communication, the clock start pulsing down so it was up and it's going down so the polarity of the clock was high so that's what we need to know so we can change this to high to lazy next is the clock polarity edge or how may you call it i call it like that here it is it's one edge or two edge this tells us when the clock is starting to receive data uh, depending on the clock so when the clock is going down are we counting data on the first edge, which is the first edge, which is the one we get down, so it's the uh, downstream, or the up? So we can uh, see here, these, those lines are driven at the falling edge of the clock and should be captured at the rising edge. So we, we start the clock on falling edge, which is correct, because we have the clock firstly high and then we're going to clock it. And the data is only read on the rising. So this is first and this is the second edge. So we know we want to choose the two edge option. Next one is the NSS. Slave select management. You don't know. So this is how you tell the device you want to start communicate with it. So how you're going to go about telling it. So we want to do it in software because we're going to write the pin, the chip select pin, on port E number three ourselves. So we want to do it in software. So we copy this software and to tell it that, that we want to do it on software, we will also add another one, which is down here. No, yeah, here it is. We want to set the internal software management. We want to copy this one alongside this one. And let's just create uh, some space so it's readable. Next is the baud rate prescale. This is the aka speed. So we want to put it in two. So it's the fastest. We don't need to do any slower. Next is the bit order. So if this, let's just copy to see what are the options. The MSB or LSB. So this is telling us that the data that is coming in or out is structured in a way that the most significant bit is the first that comes or the least significant. So if you have blah, 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 like this, are you sending data like this 
oh, not what I'm, this, so the least significant bit is first, or you're sending it like this. Usually, depends, but usually with a lot of devices I see MSB, but we can go in the data sheet as well. Here it is, uh, let's see. Bow three, blah, 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 let's go, let's search for MSB if you're lucky. This is the data that we've written into the device, MSB first. Oh, here it is. But you could search for L LSB, least significant bit, and self-test output, it doesn't say anything on the data. So we're sending the most significant bit first. So this is that settings. And then this one, you can leave it just in default. It uses any special calculations that we're not going to get into. So we just leave it at seven as default. So let's just, you can leave these numbers, but for the sake of cleanliness, I only add the necessary comments later. Uh, so you can add them yourself, but for the code that will be available later on GitHub, I will have all these lines commented. I usually don't comment structure because they're self-explanatory and I already explained them in the video. Uh, so I only add them on the special places. So this is initialization, this is the start and what have you. The code is usually pretty readable. So next, as you remember, I always like to say this, this is not a pointer to a structure, it is a structure. So with structure, we use the structure dot and its element. With, if this would be a pointer to a structure, we would use that uh, arrow. That's why it was there in the first place. Next, I, okay, let's put a space here. Now we need to initialize or burn these settings as you would call. So let's go back to the SPI. Nope. Here it is, the SPI init. So this is gonna, aka burn this into the register. So we want to burn it into the SPI1, so SPI1, and then we need to give it the pointer to the structure. So you do the address with the end. Now that we have enabled it, now we have to start it. So let's search for a command. Here it is, this is the SPI command. You will see that all the functions for all peripherals are done the same way, so, so you now know how to search for them. You need to enable the desired SPI1. Also, as a precaution, let's, after we initialize the GPIO pin, we want to put it high right away. So the device, before the SPI even initializes, because as you know, GPIO setup is the uh, before SPI1, the pin is already high, so the device will be in uh, high impedance output mode. So let's just go G GPIO set bits, GPIO E, GPIO pin free. So this is gonna set the pin free. Great, we have SPI initialized, so let's send some data. Now this is gonna be a little more trickier. Oh, we're already at the 18 minute mark. This video is getting longer. When you're sending, SPI is quite fast, as opposed to I2C, uh, but that's because it's very simple. It just uses a, a shift register that's getting uh, filled in and then empty out. This is the transmit or the receiving. And when you send data, you need to put it into the so-called transmit register, and then it's gonna get empty into the output pins and into the device. And then a response will be generated automatically into the receive register. And until you acknowledge the receive register, so you look into it, it will not be emptied and ready for another transmit data. So when you're transmitting data, you're sending a command for transmit and then receiving. So you empty the receive bit. And then again, if you want to send some data, you send it and then look into the receiving uh you could say receiving register, even though you don't care about the data inside. So let's, I'm gonna show you in functions, it's gonna make more sense. So let's create ourselves a function for sending and receiving data, because this is just not, oh, send data and receive data. It has multiple um, steps to do that. So let's go void SPI, 
um, SPI, let's call it TX, because this is the only SPI, I can call it SPI or SPI1, but let's just call it TX. And the first thing we want to send is the register in which we want to write, because on this device here, there are registers as on this microcontroller, and we need to set them up so the device behaves the way we want. And then, so the first thing we send is the register that we want to write into, and then the data that's going into that register in that order. You can also read it inside this data sheet in that way. When we go down, here it is, sending a receive. Here is the, uh, the read and write bit, most significant, and the register bits. So address, this is what AD stands for, and then the data bits. So first we want to say, do you want to read or write? We can see the not on the right, so write has to be zero to, to tell the device that we want to write to it. And then there are the, device, the address bits, so where do we want to write? And then what do we want to write? So that's the difference, so that's why, no. So the first one is gonna be, uh, let's call it an 8-bit address. I'm pretty sure it's with one S or two Ds, I don't know. And then it's the data, let's just call it like that. And then we're gonna need a receiving and we're gonna receive chunks of 8-bit data, uh, but the register is 16-bit, but we can just call it 8-bit function called SPIRX. And we just want to tell it which register we want to have the data from. So there are functional register like register for settings and there are register for data. So there's a register on this device for example 2D and this is the register for, I don't know, Z-axis data. So when you write to that register, the device knows that you want the data from that register. So when you read the data from the receiving register the next time, the data is gonna be there. So let's just copy these two functions and go to the bottom here and add it to our user functions. Let us create a bit space between them and write the uh, SPI, transmit. So firstly, we need to pull that enable pin down so the device knows that we are now communicating with it. So let's do GPIO, reset bits, <clears throat> GPIO E, GPIO yeah, pin free. This is why we're gonna create this function because writing that every time is painful. So now we want to check, as with USART, that the transmit uh, register is empty. So all the data that's been ordered to be sent has been sent and the transmit data register is empty. So there are no overlaps in data because this microcontroller can do that faster than the SPI can push data out. So let's search for flags because you know that the flags are the ones that do this kind of stuff. Oh, thanks. Interrupts and flag management. This is what we want. Blah, blah, blah. SPI I square S get flag status. This is the one. I want to put it in a while loop while this is not true. And let's put a not here. So we're gonna get a flag, it's called the flag TXE, so transmit buffer empty flag. When this register gets empty, this flag is gonna be a one. So this whole sentence here is gonna be one. With a not, this is a zero, and zero inside the while loop tells to get out of the while loop. So we will continue with our code. So this is correct way. Oh shit, forget to copy it. Here it is. SPI one and move. So if it's empty, now that's empty, we need to send it. Let's search for send function. SPI I squared S send data. This is the one we care. Let's copy it. And the sending data will be called data. Or in this case, the first thing we want to do is tell the device where to send the data. So it's going to be address. 
So the first piece of data will be address on SPI1. Uh, also, as we saw in the data sheet here, the, if you want to write it, the first bit has to be zero. So these are the eight bits. So the device address can be just uh, overlaid on top of this. So device address is like this. So if you don't define this two, they are gonna be automatically zero. So no problem uh, just doing like that. But with write, or I'm sorry, reading, we want to put this one permanently one. So you're gonna see later. So that's why we just send address. So the device now, we need to check the receive register. Let's go back to flags. Let's get this, actually, actually just copy this one and change the parameter. We're gonna use this one, receive buffer not empty. If this is a one, so the buffer is not empty, that means there's something in it. So when there's something in it, you want to read it. So that's why we keep the not here. So when this is, uh, one. Oh, come on. No. I'm horrible today. Where are you? Here we are. And here we want to do that. Like that. So when this is one, data is inside. This gets whole zero and we get out and we now to want to read that in quote marks. So let's Let's try our luck now. Read. Nope, 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 nope. This is exactly how I code. I just bounce around the code like a chicken. Come on, it's clear flag. I'm just running in circles. It's gotta be something else. SPI. I square this. Get. It's probably get data. Oh, come on, I'm so horrible. And I'm probably not gonna edit this one because I'm too lazy. Oh, receive. Oh, nice. So this is the command right above the send data. So we just need to specify from which SPI peripheral we want to read. And we just read it. This function returns something, but we don't care. Just be, this is just part of the routine. You can dive into the whole thing, why this is a thing, but in this video, we just want to get it to work. Next, we want to send what we actually want to talk to it. So let's just copy this whole thing again. And again, we're gonna wait for the transmit register and we're gonna wait for receiving, but we want to just send data. And in the end, we want to set bits back. So, aka the my the IC goes into waiting mode. So set bits. And you might have guessed the receiving function is exactly, almost exactly the same. So let's just give ourselves some easier time. So let's just copy everything. And I like to maybe just separate this one so I see where the SPI part is where it's just the timekeeping part. And now we want to send address that we want to read, receive data, and then we want to send just an empty 16-bit address. So this is just sending it, hey, I want data. It says in the manual that if you send this one, that is going to return the value from the address that you want. Also, you might remember that I said, if you're reading, then this bit has to be high. Also, this MS, this is the master and the slave. So obviously this device is slave. So we want to change the address. So this is the address. This is gonna be this long number, but we're sending eight bits. So these are gonna be two, but we want that one to be one. So if you read it binary, this is, zero one two four zero one or one two four eight one two four eight uh, bits and this one we want to have one so this is eight zero 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 or this this one are gonna be the address so we want to write one and seven zeros uh, uh, together with address so let's just 
let's put it up here address the new address is 0 8, 0 or in binary or in hex and this is just one and three zeros and another four zeros here or add address if this is wrong I will seriously edit it but okay so this is telling it hey I want to read from this address now send me and when it's received this is gonna be returned so let's return this so this is gonna get returned i'll just have this one yeah have enough space so this is the receiving routine let's save this one so nothing gets lost so let's do a sample thing first let's configure some register let me look at my cheat sheet so i know that i did everything this is right this is right and Okay, so let's uh, configure some registers. Let's go down, memory mapping. Okay, first control register. Data rate 0, 100 hertz, plenty enough for us, which is the default value, so we don't care. Power down control, we want the active mode, so this one needs to be 1. Full scale selection, table 3 says, if it's 0, it's 2. 0.3 uh, G is maximum. This is plenty. So let's go. Oh, come on. Let's go back. Uh, here. Okay. Self test. No. We want normal mode and we want to enable Z, Z Y, and X axis. So 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. So if we do it in banks of 4, this is. 0 1 0 0 so this is 4 and this is 4 2 6 7 so we want to write 4 7 in hex oh come on oh joe rogan nice 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 so we want to before the while loop we want to this is going to be a setup so spi1 or we just call it spi tx we want to send it to the so this is the register on the address 20 in hex so it's gonna be 20 and oh come on and we're gonna be sending 4 7 so this is gonna set it up because all the other values are already in default so let's go into the while loop now. Probably there are control registers. This is this is all default. I I'm kind of smart because I know this in advance, but all this is gonna be default because you don't need anything else. We don't care about that. This is the one we care. This is the output register for X, Y, and Z. We're gonna use Z because the board is laying flat like this. So the oh no 3D. So we have it flat on the table like this. So the gravitational acceleration will be measured by the Z axis and it should be 1G around uh, 9.81 meters per second squared. So let's firstly create some, let's say a global wire, why not? Let's call it um, uint, let's call it, it's gonna be 16 bit. Although the data coming back is 8 bit, we're gonna have it 16 bit because we're gonna multiply that number by a thousand so we don't have any decimal places because uh, I don't want to bother with decimal so we're gonna have it in milli so 10 to the minus third power um, so it's gonna be for 1g it's gonna read thousand so let's call it um, global integer z x let's call it z x because why not so z x is going to be at the beginning of while loop defined as SPI receive and the you know, the Z output register is on 2D. Oh, holy shit, I'm already at 35 minutes. So those who are watching, uh, uh, I hope this you find this video 
least a little entertaining and probably solves your uh, probably solves your problem for SPI. So we write the SPI value. Now we can just send this one, but let's just make it a little bit better. So let's actually send the, uh, the number in G, so acceleration. So to convert it in acceleration, we have to know what kind of data is coming in. So let's go back to the data sheet and let's go up. It's probably up here somewhere. Data, 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 data. No, no. So the data somewhere here, oh, come on. If I can't find it right now, I'm going to be pissed. Somewhere here, it says that the data that is sent is in two's complement. So that means that in one 8-bit value, there are positive and negative numbers represented because as you can see, the x-axis like this can be tilted in the positive or the negative direction, y and z. So the force can be coming on top of this board or from the bottom. So this is gonna be positive and negative depending on the orientation of the IC. Um, so somewhere in here that I cannot find for, for whatever reason, there it says that the, the, the data that's coming in is in two's complement. So and please search it for yourself. I don't have the time now because I don't know what's happening to me. So I'm going to be smart and all knowing and I know that the data is coming in two's complement. And in order for to convert two's complement into the positive and negative numbers in decimal form as we understand it, is to firstly negate all the bits if the first bit is one. So I'm going to take my time. If you already watched this video to this point, you probably want to hear it. So let's let me write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I can't count zero. So these are eight bits. Let's separate them. So it's obvious. And two's complements works this way. If the first bit, the most significant bit is one, then this number is negative. If it's zero, it's positive. So if it would be a zero, then it's a positive number. And if it's one, a negative number, we need to convert it. So all, only these seven bits is the actual number. This is just the, you can say it marker. So it's uh, separates positive from negatives. So if this is zero, then obviously only this is the relevant number that we want. So only if it's one, we want to convert it into a real negative number. And that's done so that you take this number, flip it around all the bits. So one becomes a zero and zero becomes a one. You can do this by negating. So we can negate it using this tilde, or we can write it against an or op nope or operator against a zero ff so or operators work this way so if you have a zero this is xor no pardon this is xor so if there's a zero and a zero it becomes a zero because they're both the same but if there's a zero and a one it's gonna be a one so let's do it one way so if this data has one at the beginning how do we do that well, we know it has to have one in the beginning, so let's have g, let's do it in, you see why, g and z axis and 0x80. What does this mean? You know from before that 0x8 represents 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, this number. An AND operator is gonna add these two together, so where there's an 1 over here, there's gonna be 1, if it's here a 1, it's gonna stay 1, and if it's a 0, it's gonna stay 0. But where's the 0 on this side, all the zeros, all the numbers on this side are gonna get converted to 0. So we have this number, this number, and we write this to it, this bit is gonna stay 0, and this one gets forced to 0. And so what we get by applying end and this number to any number, we're going to get this number as well. So this is handy because we want to see if this, this is the what we came. So any, any shape of this 
data it is anything like whatever it's gonna end it and just leave a one if there was in the beginning so if there was we know it's a negative number so that's why we're going to the for loop so if this is equal to a 0x80 so if this is equal to this one because that's what and operator is gonna do then we know it's a negative number and we can convert it back to a aka positive number but now we have to keep in mind that we know that it's a negative number to do it we firstly flip the bit so we can do this by doing g and so we're gonna do it and just say it's g and 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 just put in tilde so we can flip it or you can do it like g and z x or 0x ff so this is gonna flip all the bits because all the eight bits because all the eight bits on this side are one and the xor is gonna do its magic but let's just use this first one because probably it's more intuitive for some of you next we need to just add a one so let's add a one because we subtracted the one in order to get that two's complement number so it's just gonna plus equals one so it's just gonna add one and you know that we made a 16 bit because we want to raise it by a factor of thousand that thousand is too much for a 8 bit value uh, 8 bit is only 2 to the uh, power of 8 is 256 so that's why we made it a 16 bit so we make we have to make sure that the first 8 bit are zero because only the last uh, 8 bits are the data so let's just g n so it doesn't happen to have any data in the front so we have defined it is equal to or we can do it like this we can or zero x so the first eight bits have to be zero and the next eight bits can be whatever they are if they are one and operator is gonna preserve a one if there's a zero it's gonna be a zero so we preserve these bits and we force these bits to zero this is what this does it just converts a 16-bit number if when this uh, variable is initialized that that can have some data in front of those eight bits that we actually care about and this is it we just need to convert the data into g's and we saw that we converted this mode into the default which is the here it is the 2.3 g's so we converted it on this scale so it's gonna be on two so by a factor thousand we have to multiply it by 2300 and then divide it by the resolution and because we have a two's complement on eight bit number coming in it's gonna be seven bit number so this g n z x equals to g n z x multiplied by 2300 so this is the g's per bit so this is what this 2300 divided by one to seven so this is a seven bit so this represents g's per bit multiplied by uh bits this is and this is gonna cancel and we're gonna leave out with g's but multiplied by thousand so that's what we have to uh, remember now let's send it we have the function from before you start um, send text because we know that this is a negative number that's why we came into this function in the first place so let's send a minus sign so our uh, terminal is gonna read mi uh, minus and then let's send the data send a number this is also the other function and the number is g and g and z x else so if it is no this is ugly if it is a positive number let's just convert it and send it so let's just copy this one and this one so this is the other one and let's after this one print a new line so we're gonna use this one and the new line is like this forward slash n 
and let's do a delay i'm just gonna copy it if you know from previous videos i'm just gonna go over it to lazy because this video is already holy shit 45 minutes long we're gonna wait for some time in an empty function this is inefficient but when we get to timers we're gonna do this differently so let's save it don't forget to add the source for the compiler so it's gonna compile spi oops nope and put in your username to correct path so let's save this let's go to the terminal let's make it yes no errors let's see if it works save it and let's open putty let's reset the cpu here you can see the values and i don't have the camera so you have to trust my voice i have the microcontroller flat on the board and i pick it up and i put it on its side so it's on so it's on uh, this side is facing down so this uh, side is facing down and that's why it's zero or run zero and i turn it around so this this side that you're looking at is facing my desk that's why it's negative that's exactly how we wanted it and i face it back up and it's 1231 so 1 1.23 g's which is a little too much i probably no this is right well probably this number isn't very accurate maybe a 2000 would be more because oh i don't know because here it says minimum of two so let's try it this one so let's oops so let's upload this code and let's see what we get same i just yeah it's like that i don't know anyway it's close enough i'm satisfied it worked in the first run which is very nice so thank you for making this far we did a little more with we saw how we can use the data sheet to get the correct number not just some number we saw how to set up this function which is the most difficult thing until now well we had these two functions before but this has some bit of advanced logic you could say it this way but this part and especially this part can be configured this whole thing works for most spi device so this routine where you want to put the data in which register um and what is it and when you're reading it most of the time you have to tell it that you're reading it so you firstly need to send the uh, send some kind of address with something in front of it so it tells us that you have to read the number so i hope you learned something today and thank you for making for wasting 50 minutes for this video and have a good time bye